Hello, everyone. I'm Kristen. And I'm Rachel. And this is So I'm Watching Outlander, Season 6, Episode 5, Give Me Liberty. Far departure from last week. Yes. This was such a jolt of energy. Yeah. We we were, though, apparently alone last week. A lot oh, really? of We got a lot of comments that they, like, loved it. They didn't know what, like, we watched a different show than they did. They loved it. They thought the Ian stuff was great. And I'm just sort of like... Glad for you. Yeah, I, but I, I don't know. I found it sort of just like... Ugh. Same. I was also sick. That's probably part of it. And I was also exhausted. Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot. That Might goes have been us. It. Might have been our bad. But this episode was a fire. It was a lot better. I like it. I th- I'm with you. I like it when they go to town. Mm-hmm. Like, either if it's even just River Run, like if they're with Jocasta and they're with, like, a bunch of people, but they're in New Bern in this episode. And I like when they're in, like, town town. Because mm-hmm. it's, there's, like, more people, different people. We Oh, like, no, they're in Wilmington. Wilmington? Is that yeah, where? Yeah, they're Wilmington? in Wilmington. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, because um, Fergus is in New Bern. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Regardless, I appreciate that because we often do get like then Jocasta and like that's usually where we get Lord John and everything. So it's all it's all a lot more sort of exciting. And adding on to this is that Jamie is now like a full trader. Yes. Which is great. Yeah. He's at his best when he's a full trader. Mm-hmm. When he's <laughs> to working the crown. for himself. Exactly. I guess we the episode starts with um back in 1740. Yes. Six or whatever. Sure. Flora McDonald. McDonald is absconding with the Bonnie Prince, um, dressed like a woman and super complaining about it. <laughs> the, we'll get there, but the men in this show are starting Woof. to get on my fucking nerves. Yeah. Everyone except Jamie. Sure. Although, well, no, I mean, he's not really getting on my nerves, but he's, I mean, I always do get nervous when he starts doing treason again. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> But he's, you're right. He's not getting on my nerves. So he, Bonnie Prince is is complaining about the bonnet. Like, how do you suffer this bonnet? And Flora is like, uh, it's probably better than getting hella murdered. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. just suck it up. <laughs> yeah. And so they end up escaping. Somehow he passes for a woman. You know, it it was early in the morning. I guess. But <laughs> and like looking down, I mean, maybe that British soldier is nearsighted I don't know who knows but it's like they weren't even because that's one of my favorite things actually from um Enola Holmes Mm -hmm. is that she's like she dresses like a widow to get into a place because she's like nobody wants to like ask about grieving and so I'm like you did couldn't even dress him like in morning weeds like what are we doing here so regardless they they manage to escape he is then we find out later apparently drinking himself to death in Italy because he's you know failed he is the worst. He is terrible. We mark bl- me. Blessedly, only get him for that one scene. Oh, I know. When we when they were like doing the re- or previously on, and <laughs> yeah. we got a lot of him in the preview, I was like, "What are we doing? No, no." Um. So we do get a lot of Flora uh, McDonald. She is basically kind of the reason that we are in town. Is there's um? I didn't totally understand what they were doing. They were like Jacosta was throwing a party in her honor. She was, like, sponsoring her because she, like, she's a little celebrity because okay. of what she did for the Bonnie Prince. Yeah. But that so, still feels super dangerous. Yeah, but because she is speaking on behalf of the, the crown. The crown, okay. Yeah. Um, so she's using her celebrity, and then it's, like... Because that's why Jamie, or that's why Claire's confused. Like, she's a Jacobite, though. Okay. So why is she now supporting the crown? Okay. And I think the whole thing is like, well, she, she saw what happened with Col- um, Culloden. Okay. So I think that's why she turned coats. And, Interesting. Yeah. And so because there is such a large percentage of Scottish settlers in North Carolina... They're, That's why they brought her there. To, to try to, like, ease mm-hmm. the tensions. Okay, that all makes sense. There also is a big to-do made about her necklace having been stolen and one emerald having been kept. Which, oh, we do get, I guess, the... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... I didn't put that together until this moment. <laughs> we watched this almost two hours ago. Um, I thought she was, like, signaling. Like I thought so, too. Be, and because we, like, really zoomed in on it and yeah. she touched it in such a way. And so I thought that was why Claire was like, here, let's go outside. Right. And so she was going to be like, I'm not actually for the king and crown. I'm actually, like, doing a whole secret thing. Yeah. That's not what happens, though. Yeah. So because, I mean, 
Claire, Jocasta, and Flora go out into the gazebo to smoke some weed. And and drink some stuff. <laughs> Flora's doing something different. She's not smoking, but she's, she's drinking whiskey. Drinking like in, or I probably. think, but I think Claire gives her like a tonic to like relax oh, too or yeah. something. But yeah. Jocasta is getting high as a kite, mm-hmm. which is her eyes hurt. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, love that. Yeah, and I lo- I do love that she starts smoking and she's like, "We're a proper gentleman's club out here in the little gazebo." It was super cute. I loved that a lot. But yes, okay. So we did get the explanation for the emerald, which was interesting because at first I was like. What the hell? Mm-hmm. Like, what is actually, like, what's going on? But then, okay, we'll get to the end when we get to the end. Because I feel I feel many ways about it. Yeah. Okay, so, and then Jocasta is also doing a treason, kind of. I See, now, I don't know. Because is, did we get confirmation that Fergus is printing treasonous pamphlets? Well, he was printing the one about Flora. That was the other. That was the other printer. That was the other printer, and that's why he got okay. attacked. I'm not really. I I'm com- I'm confused because I'm a little confused about everybody. Everybody's loyalties except for Claire and Jamie. Yeah, yeah. Because Jamie, I think that's why Jamie was annoyed with Jocasta yeah. because she bought him that pin- that printing press, and I think she is trying to make him happy. And Fergus, if, yes. And so if he is printing. Tory pamphlets or whatever. He's going to get attacked by the revolutionaries. And if he's printing revolutionary stuff, he's going to get arrested by for treason by the British. Right. And But I'm thinking that Joe Costa is helping him do that because if he is printing stuff for the crown, then it will keep him safe. Yeah. Because I feel like she's doing that because she couldn't save Murta. And mm-hmm. so because I don't think she would throw money at Fergus to be... A, like a, a rebel. rebel because that's what got Murta killed yeah. essentially. Yeah, I don't so know. So that's why I'm kind of like, mm, what are we doing? I it's a little, understand. it's a little confusing. Also, I don't agree with her. Um, she posits this theory that like in New Bern, in a in a town, a like developed town slash city, they'll have less problem with the baby with Henri Christian. Yeah. And I'm like, more people are going to have less of a problem with the dwarf baby? I don't really... Well, maybe she's thinking, well, because if they're in town, though, the, maybe people in, like, the city will have seen things like that previously. So they'll and think so it it's less shocking. superstitious, yeah. maybe. Okay, in that case, I can kind of agree, but I'm like, opening this up to more people seems like doing the opposite thing well and then two i mean there might be more like learned people sure. in the city yeah. so again they're not going to be like look at this you know sprightly baby yeah you know i wonder what kind of luck he brings or whatever but yeah. or like some scary thing about it yeah whereas like the woodland people are like you know being really freaky about it yeah I, it, I guess it could go either way but she just seemed very certain that like introducing a wider amount of people was going to be a better thing. Yeah. And I think like not a hundred, that's not a hundred percent foolproof. Well, because yes, because I mean, the brothel was in Paris. That's true. And so people still were like being gross about people like that in Paris. I don't know, man. (laughs) So that's what I just like, I have a lot of confusion about people's decisions Mm -hmm. right now. Regardless, it was all, you know, kind of cool. You know, we get a little bit of backlash about Jamie um, quitting being the agent, uh, the Indian agent, but not a ton of backlash, just like a little bit of like, oh, I was shocked to hear the news, but nothing really actually came of it. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. And then he met with the Sons of Liberty, I think they were calling mm-hmm. themselves, uh, and he had to really break poor Lord John's heart. He really did. I do feel like at a certain point, if you're Lord John, He's known Jamie for like 20 years now. Mm -hmm. They've known each other for such a long time. I do feel like at some point you have to be like, if he's making this decision, it must be for a reason. For a reason. And he, they don't part badly, Mm -hmm. but he does, you can see like a betrayal. And I like David Barry is so good. I, Love him so much. Mm-hmm. I love Lord John, and I just want them to be happy and be friends and just like, oh. So, and obviously he's not back in England yet, which we thought he was going to be. Um, but yeah. So then we can, I guess, go back to. Oh no! Actually, there's one more thing where Jamie protects the Tory printer. Yes, Jamie and Lord John protect the Tory printer. 
then he gets disinvited from the Sons of Liberty. To which he basically is like, uh, if you want freedom, that means fucking freedom. Yep, that means that you can't be mad at somebody for yeah. having their own opinion. But it's also like he owns a printing press. There's nothing to say that that's his opinion. He just printed something for someone. You have to let him do that. That has to be if, if, what you're after. Yep, yep. Which people still today don't seem to understand. <laughs> the whole time he was doing this speech, I was thinking to myself, I wonder what Jamie Fraser would think about the whole today, situation right yeah. now. Yeah. I think you'd have a lot of thoughts. Me too. A lot of thoughts. So that was basically the the end of it in town. It was interesting. It was a little confusing. We got some John Gray. Um, and then at the very end of the episode, we get... I guess the man who attacked Flora and stole her necklace and he is whistling a like a more modern song. Like a bugle. I don't song. remember what they called it. Um, but it was like da 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 da. And he has the emerald. And they cut it right palm. as we were about to see his face. Yeah, I don't know who the fuck that is. I, I don't, don't either. I don't remember anything. I don't either. And I'm wondering if it is somehow tied to what happens later with um Roger and Brianna could be but I no idea flabbergasted yeah. I have no, no idea I'm super interested it's it was that was like one of the better cliffhangers they've ever that was really good held on like I want to say like one of the better cliffhangers since the like midpoint of season one mm -hmm. where Jamie's just in the window with the gun um, yeah, I really, I really liked it. And that he had the little emerald and everything. It was very cool. Cause I, it implies a, like a traveler, to, yes. like a time traveler to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I want to know who it is. Then back up at the Ridge, uh, Lizzie is having an attack of malaria, but don't worry. Her boyfriends are on the case. <laughs> Such good boyfriends. <laughs> we got a comment, I think two episodes ago that was like, did I miss something about Lizzie and, and Kezi and Josiah? And I was like, well, not. Technically, we knew that because of the book, but they have been making comments for a handful of episodes now about how both of them are really, like, waiting on uh, Lizzie, like, hand and foot. And so it is, we are all, you know, everybody's making little asides about it and like, oh, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so it's it's super cute. I like that a lot. Tragically, Marsley is packing to join Fergus in Newburn. What the fuck? I don't want it. I, that's a change that I hope that we make because I don't want I don't want her to go. Don't sideline Lauren Lyle for the rest she, of this season. I'm going to be furious. I know. She is so spectacular. Yeah. I love her so much. Her performance is Marsley cuz I like her in the books a lot, but she brings something to her performance mm -hmm. in the show. There's a certain sparkle. Oh my god, it's yeah. amazing. I love her so much. Roger is still <laughs> Hanging out with Amy McCallum literally nonstop. I want to say this is a minor misstep because we both have mentioned that we're enjoying Roger a lot this season. Yes. He, he's, this is like the best I've liked Roger in the show almost the whole time. And it, he doesn't get to an angry place in this episode, but he does get to a place where he's like Amy McCallum when Brianna confronts him and is like, you are a married man spending time alone with a widow constantly and it's like you need to be here with us and he's like but she needs me gross i would i tell you that sent me <laughs> because you know this oh, but yeah. i have spent time or i had someone in my life who actually said you need to need me more and i'm like <laughs> nope no, no no i need you the the exact right amount i cannot stand men like this uh-uh where you want so desperately, you want this woman. You are so impressed by her and uh -huh. what she does. Uh -huh. But then when you feel like she's outshining you and you she doesn't need you enough, you need to tell her that she needs to need you more. My guy, it's mm -hmm. about you. You need to do some shadow work, some self-exploration and figure out what you want because he's yeah. doing this because he doesn't know what he wants. A hundred percent. And he like also, and, and I mean, I... To a certain extent, I get his argument where he... Because she doesn't really need him. Mm -hmm. But that's the... But she wants him, though. Exactly, which is more important. Yes! But the ar the only thing... The argument that he makes is he's like, you are bringing indoor plumbing to the ridge. Like, I can't offer you the same thing I can offer her. And so I understand, like, one ounce of that, but it's also like, accept the fact that you chose this woman, and if you were in the present day your present day if you were in the 60s like you're supposed to be she still wouldn't 
need you. Right. And the only reason why Brianna is doing that is because she had the conversation with Claire where yeah. she's like, I don't know what my purpose is exactly. here. So she found her purpose. Yeah. His per he instead of finding his purpose, he is looking to others to fill mm-hmm. that hole. Yeah, my dude, that's not how it works. Because nah. Fergus is doing the same fucking thing. Hundred percent. He he doesn't know himself. He doesn't yeah. know what he wants. It is not our job. Mm-hmm. It is not your wife's job to to fill that hole for you. Well, and blessedly, I do think that Jocasta giving him the printing press is a positive. Yes, in, in absolutely. That sense. Because that he even said that he was like the last time I felt happy and useful was when we were running the printing press in Edinburgh. So. Do yeah. that again. If that's what it's going to take to make you feel useful, then go do that. That's amazing. Good yeah. for you. Sing your I want song and yeah. see what happens. Yeah. And so I think also Roger does feel like emasculated by the 1700s because he doesn't know how to shoot. He's right. He's hunt. an educated you know, man. He's an yeah. educated man. He's, you know, he's soft, if you want to call it that, compared to the other men. And so he it's the type of thing where it's like, I thought we did this work last season. Right. And so like having the Amy McCallum stuff now is a little like, come on, like mm-hmm. you're killing me. Speaking of the indoor plumbing, which is what uh, Brianna is trying to do, she's like walking. They're all four of them. Um, her and Marcelli and Lizzie and Malva are all walking along the river trying to find the like correct spot for her to put like a wheel that'll get like water up the uh, up the way. And she's trying to make clay pipes. I remember that from the book because they mm-hmm. keep like cracking because they're too long, I think, or something like that. And sure. like metal is too expensive, even though that's what she wants. Regardless, it's all super interesting. I really like Brianna, the engineer. Um, and they come up, they come across, uh, well, what I thought at first was a fairy circle, and they just immediately start touching it. And I was like, "You fucking idiots!" Yeah, but still, even even if it wasn't the fairy circle, it was a love love charm, like a love spell. Don't yeah, touch it. Don't touch it. Nope. it and especially Marsley was the first one to pick up a piece, and I was like, "Girlfriend, <laughs> you know better." With your fucking love potion, mom. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah, don't do not. That. Like, if anything, disturb it with your foot or yeah. pour water on it. But yeah. like, don't touch it with your fingers. If they're touching the human finger bones Blech. and everything, gross. Blech. And Super ashes gross. from yeah. a burned person. Blech. Hard pass. What love spell is that, by the way? Because yeah. that seems like an ill wish, if any. It does. It definitely does. Blech. And then Malva pulls a real somebody shit on the coats <laughs> moment. And fucking she's, Malva, man. She's like, it must be Amy McCallum. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, bye. <laughs> it's like remarkable to me that nobody has like picking up on it yet. Like, I can we get some like sidelong looks at like uh, everyone just being like, what the fuck is up with Melvin? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Because like, she absolutely, if <laughs> if she was in a room with me, I'd be like, I don't know. gross vibe. The it's energy just, in yeah. here is oh, so like weird. It. Um, <laughs> Some Palo Santo for you. Yeah, just let's you need just it. Sa- sage it out. Let's <laughs> yeah, sage let's, it out. Let's, have you, let's do a, an aura cleanse or something. Well, I also feel like at a certain point, there has to be a conversation that's like, I don't know, Malva disappears for hours at a time and she comes back smelling like the dead. Uh, she must smell. Because she has, well, they all have to smell. Uh, but I'm sorry, rotting corpse that she, that's got to get in your hair. So that is a, that it, I don't know what it smells like. D- it it must live in your hair though. Do yeah. you think she constructed that little lean to to keep this man? I don't know because maybe she has a dead man yeah. <laughs> in in the woods and she's using his body parts for love spells. She's trying to get I, and literally anybody, any dude at this point. Yeah. I don't know. She there's no way that she did all that work herself. It I, I'm wondering if maybe ooh what if it is a lean to like a fishing spot for the old man? Okay. And so like because she's a creep, she yeah. like knows that he has it. And so also, how did she move him? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. She's probably so questions. she probably got crazy, crazy person strength. Oh, who knows? She's a she is so bonkers. She is also totally hooking up with Obadiah Henderson. And in- in- Church in or meeting inside house inside the church inside it, and Roger catches her, and she immediately is like, "If you tell my father, I'm going to tell everyone that I saw you kissing Amy McCallan." And he was like, "I wasn't though," and she was like, "Who do you think they'll believe? They'll believe." And she flat out tells him, "They will believe me." Diabolical, and the fact that then Roger doesn't say anything to anybody because he knows that he fucked up. So, okay, he did fuck up, but you don't think anyone deserves to be like, like, you don't think he should be like Brianna to like Brianna, like Malva's fucking bonkers. Ah. 
Yeah, well, because then, well, he because, probably didn't want the I told you so. Well, but but Brianna, she even says, she's like, I was never worried about you doing something with mm-hmm. Amy McCallum. I just am worried about the optics of the situation. Right. So I just feel like if he was like, also, hey, Brianna, I caught Amy McCallum, or I've caught Malva boning down this dude. Wifey, here's some tea. Oh my God, right? <laughs> like, uh, get a picture of Richard Rankin and <laughs> put the fingernails on him. I just, I'm sort of like, I, I don't know. The, he's going to keep this a secret. And then we get the previews for next week. And it's when Claire is ill and just Malva, Malva just is slips right in. Creeping all over the fucking place. I don't know. It fucking scoop spooky. And they're just so willing to just be like, oh, the Christies. Oh, oh, Malva. And like, no, girly is weird. Girly's weird. Yeah, so I'm not going to say it now because I do think we're going to find out, but I've, I've re-found out what the deal is with, with her and also what the deal is with Alan because that was what I was like, I don't remember. that. I know Alan mm-hmm. is creepy, but I don't remember the deal with him. And so I remember the deal now. I'm not going to say it until it actually comes up. Yeah, Prepa- I don't prepare know. Prepare yourself, yeah. though, because it's a doozy. It's a super doozy. I think that is part of the reason why she's trying so hard to like seduce one of these men. Yeah. Because she's got a problem. Mm-hmm. They got the bell for the meeting house, and so that's what they're like they're working on. Um, I want to say there was one more thing that was going on. Oh, um, Brianna's pregnant again. Yay, with, yeah, yeah. With yep. the little, we know it's going to be a little girl. Um, and honestly, I think that's like mostly. It. Um, Claire did hit her ether. Oh God, at the party. Yeah, and D- Jamie gave her a weird look, but then didn't pursue it again. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious. And also, you had the weed. Hit the weed. Yeah. yeah. But she she was like, I had to take a little rest. So you knocked yourself out at a gazebo at a party. Yeah. I what know. are you doing? Because she had that flashback of um, King Louis. Yeah. I don't. T- okay. Especially because to me, sure, she didn't want to do right. that. Tra- trauma is trauma. But she also did. Of it, it, with like full consciousness and forethought and soundness of mind, make the decision to do that so that Jamie would be released mm-hmm. from prison. So I'm also like, yeah, it wasn't great and it was potentially a little traumatic, but also like we haven't thought about that again since it was like over. Is the yeah. is the stuff with Mr. Brown, Lionel Brown, is that pulling that back up again? Prob- probably, and okay. I would also assume that we'll probably get a flashback of. Her first attack right after her and Jamie get oh, married. married. So it's probably all of just We're the, just going to go back and back and back. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. All of the assaults, which I, I mean, like yeah. I said, trauma is trauma. Yeah. You never know what's going to pull it out. But I just, we're I, getting to a point where she's knocking herself out in yeah. public because she can't deal with it. And, yeah. I, and I need there to be a conversation. Well, the other thing too is like, what's so, what what, what stuck out as weird to me about this specific thing is that, like I said, she made a very conscious and deliberate choice to let the king fuck her, essentially. And it was like three pulses. And then yeah, it was like, it was like, I mean, I, I can't. Yeah, yeah. I can't argue that. But but that's the thing where it's like, because that's never, we've never registered that as a trauma since it happened. Mm-hmm. It's, it was odd to me to have it presented as a trauma in this moment, I guess. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So other than that, I but now that you say that, I bet you're right that we're going to go back to the the that first guy she stabbed. Mm-hmm. And that's I think you're probably right. And probably while she's all hallucinating, while she's all feverish next week. OK. I need for her to not be wearing a terrible short curly wig. I don't know what we're going to do. I yeah. don't know. I'm going to be. Maybe she'll <laughs> I've, she'll probably be wearing the um, cause bonnet where she, she'll because she puts on a handkerchief a lot when she's yeah. going to do surgery. So she's probably going to going to just do that. OK, I feel like we're jumping like huge swaths of time a lot of the time. Like, I feel like we're really moving through months. So I think at some point she'll probably just have something closer to what she did in season one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm just sort of like, I don't <laughs> want it. I don't want it. So, um, yeah, I think that is uh, it for the most part. I thought it was a pretty good episode. Uh, Roger did then set up Amy McCallum and and Obadiah Henderson. He tells Brianna, like, I I told Obadiah to check in on her and, like, finish fixing all the stuff in the cabin. And that was who Malva was fooling oh, yeah. around with, right? Mm-hmm. So I wonder if this is a way to kind of, like, oh, fuck you to Malva. A little, for sure. Yeah. 
Because that's the thing, too, is, like, I don't think Roger is, like, especially hung up on, like, premarital sex necessarily. But no. he just is, like, dude. Yeah, and, and the <laughs> fact that, like... He was like, your father and brother are right outside. outside. And they're just like hiding behind stacked chairs. Yeah. I mean, cu- you guys. <laughs> and she is lucky as fuck that there was a back way out of that church. Yeah, seriously. My God. Melva. So, yeah. Again, I can't say enough about Jessica Reynolds. She's I know. Doing, doing such amazing, a great job. Sweetie, but it's. You creepy. You creepy as hell. It's so spooky. Yeah. I can't stand it. Um, Yeah. But so. I liked this episode a lot. Me too. I'm and I'm yeah. really excited for next week. It was funny. It was fun. It was interesting. Yeah, I really I dug it a lot. So yeah, next week should be pretty good. We only have um three episodes left, so we'll see. We'll see how we end up this season. I'm excited. Yeah. Me too. Well, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.